from the sky you can see the true beauty of our homeland, Malawi. We have vast lands with fertile soils available for agriculture. Majestic mountains are the sources of our rivers. We can enjoy the shade of trees that are hundreds of years old. Our great lake is home to more fish species than any other lake in the world. We are blessed with everything we need and yet those of us who actually work the land know that farming here is full of challenges. Nyingo <laughs> Our land loses fertility and problems with pests and disease increase. Whilst conditions get tougher, our population grows and we need to find ways to produce enough food for everyone. To meet this challenge, the Kulima program was created. Kulima is a multi-stakeholder program which supports the Malawian agriculture in a wide range of areas. One of its measures is the establishment of farmer field schools, places where farmers come together to work on solutions for the problems we face. How do we bring fertility back in our soils? What can we do to fight pests and diseases effectively? What type of crops can we grow to diversify our production and improve food security? How can we make fishing more sustainable? The Farmer Field School creates space where these kinds of questions are taken seriously. It is a different kind of school, accessible to everyone and open to new ideas. At Mzuzu in the northern region, the Kulima project has a campus to train farmer field school master trainers. Each master trainer class is made up of 30 students who live on campus for 13 weeks to be trained in a wide range of agricultural practices as well as the farmer field school methodology. Farmer Field School embraces the fact that farmers are not empty. They have knowledge. It's only creating that forum where they can be able to share what they know. The training is set up in three aspects. There is the classwork, and there is um, the field excursion to the outreach groups, where they start satellite Farmer Field Schools for practice. And majorly, 65% is on field work. The concepts that they are discussing in class, they come and try them out in the field. Most of the trainees are government extension officers and some work for NGOs supporting the agricultural extension work. At the end of the intensive training, they all graduate as master trainers or MTs. As master trainers, we are TOTs. We teach uh, the trainers and those trainers will also have their own work their own uh, uh, schools. 
The mission of the master trainers is to set up a network of farmer field schools, which eventually is going to stretch across the country. The starting points of the network are three residential training centers, one in Tujila, one in Ilisasadzi, and the one in Imzuzu that we have just visited. The master trainers graduating from these RTCs will set up schools in their districts to train lead farmers as community-based facilitators. The facilitators will then set up more farmer field schools in their localities, extending the network further and further. The network works in two directions. Ulima is able to provide the farmer field schools with knowledge and farm inputs whilst the farmers can also channel back their experiences with these inputs and technologies. The feedback provides Kulima with important information to adjust their support to the specific needs of the farmers. By 2023, Kulima aims to integrate 400,000 farmers into this network. Let's have a look at one of these schools to see how it works. The facilitator Blessings Nyirenda is a student of the Master Trainers course in Imzuzu. He is on a visit to his outreach group where he gains real life experience in the facilitation of a farmer field school. This is a great opportunity, uh, this Kulima program, as also it is its objectives that, it has, uh, that the farmers should be able to increase their food security, income, as well as also nutrition and that alone gives me also a push uh, to be part of this movement that is creating change in our farmers. The outreach group practices an agro-ecosystem analysis or AESA. The farmers scout the field and take notes on observations like growth rates of crops or disease infestation. So matenda kwa ya moyo. Sono kama atendaya tingamarana na yoli. Okay. AESA is a fundamental part of the farmer field school methodology, which leads us to a better understanding of the well-being of our soils and plants. This type of environmental awareness is especially important in times of climate change. The United Nations says the storm that's just ravaged parts of southern Africa is possibly the worst weather-related disaster ever to hit the southern hemisphere.
Nezo vuto kwa mpi, muri mazuo na figa. Tayo siku karika tayo siku ma twelve ko zao siku. Muna mo amalege zao mu, muna mo undalege zao mu, muna mo undalege zao mu, muna undalege zao. Ena undalege zao. Daddy di sambili ne, kuri di sambili ne. Ena i kunga daddy banga wani, daddy biara ni bako rujika di mbuta na tibaya, tibaya ame ba pedi abo. Dia dari mana yang gajangga? Ninye bazangga zina di zina. Masing family ama boya, kundi tengga zogudia, kubila nazo. Kalau orang di luar Afrika, cokudia di ribe. Di mireng gue menerima ini hari zungguli lama dalam moga ni misinge mudi. Ibu madu lidua. Meneru gue senjulong garu gue cerai ani. Jeloat. Eh, mireng gue gue apa? Mereka gua ada, kerang gua zada. Mereka gua sejenak ada. Dia yang pergi kari di kawal di kawal pak. Ikan orang kira ada kuasa suami umpa cian cian. Trees have a root system, and these roots actually hold on to the soils. And when they hold on to the soils, they actually reduce soils that would run away from a position. So soils are going to remain there. Dr. Joyce Njoloma considers trees as an essential protection against the floods like the one caused by Idai. And it's not only their root system which is important. The canopy itself, the shade, would actually provide for reduced uh, rainwater impact. So when the rains fall, it doesn't come direct to the soil, but then it comes slower, and so much of the soil is not actually moved up. Dr. Njoloma is part of the scientific backbone of the Kulima program. The scientific backbone consists of seven institutions who belong to the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research. The collaboration of these institutions with Kulima is coordinated by GIZ's Green Innovation Centers for the Agriculture and Food Sector. The institutions provide Kulima with innovative agricultural knowledge as well as farm inputs, including improved planting materials. Kulima uses the Farmer Field School Network to distribute the knowledge and farm inputs to organize the farmers across the country. Dr. Njoloma works for ECRAF, or the World Agroforestry Center. Agroforestry is uh, agriculture and forestry. The term basically means growing of trees together with crops. The scientist is especially interested in fertilizer trees, which provide nutrients to the soil and thereby can improve agricultural productivity. These Grilicidia trees are very good at this, as Dr. Njoloma was able to prove on a study plant. Over here, I have a plot with maize, which received chemical fertilizer, 100% the requirement, as stipulated in the Guide to Agriculture Production, plus the organic fertilizer that's coming from the Grilicidia. And then on this far end, we have the maize that only received organic fertilizer that the fertilizer trees applied, and that's the grilicidia there. And all we are saying here is, even if you don't apply the chemical fertilizer, you still get an equivalent good quality maize compared to what you have when you apply both the chemical and the organic fertilizer. The result of this field study is good news. Grilicidia planted within our maize boosts the crop growth equally good as expensive chemical fertilizer. Alternatively, we can also use chopped up branches to fertilize crops growing out of reach of the Grilicidia tree. They're actually getting free nitrogen from organic material. Six. 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 
at the Rural Training Center in Tujila, Dr. Njoloma shares her knowledge with upcoming master trainers. Gracidia Lita may have 3.5% of nitrogen. This tells you that there is substantial nutrient that can actually be released for plants to utilize. Not every household has livestock that they can get uh, the quality manure that we are looking for, but every other household can plant tree. And that's why we say, let's plant tree in our homesteads, in our landscape, then we can actually do all these things. Subsequently, the students put the newly acquired knowledge to practice on their study plot. They take Clevisidia leaves to apply on young fruit trees planted in a previous agroforestry session. Done with the exercise, the trainees spread out to their outreach groups in the villages close by. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I enjoy interacting with farmers very much. For the farmers to come to you, to ask for ideas, to ask for advice, it's like we are one. Monga ya baba yet? Sidi kona wudi mina ntengo wenu wenu ndu wet? Ifeo, ngati funa bebuli ntengo wubidide kula wubu, kita ngudu lako yani, ntambi zo kazi. Fawari kwa funa kwa ndi masamba. Ndewudu wubu, kita ngudu wubu kwa our farmers are happy to see us. They are happy to receive visitors. They are always welcoming. Wherever we go, they welcome us by singing, yeah? they dance, they interact. If you give them room to ask questions, they are able to ask questions. If you give, if you are friendly to them, they are also friendly to you. Men are to go till a grisidia what we pamene, eh? Don't you go very grandadia? Jagu dead. Umuzo was my bezega mu federeza o gurisa, umuso ziani, zidi mo, eh? NPK, yeah? NPK, you almost summer about <laughs> bringing in agroforestry where we are looking at trees providing for the soil organic matter then it actually improves the quality of the soils it improves on the productivity aspect and reducing on the expenses that they would have incurred to have an equivalent production of their crop often we underestimate the importance of trees and reduce them to a mere source of firewood. Agroforestry helps us to appreciate how much they can do to improve the productivity 
of our farms. Beyond that, we simply need their strong roots and canopies to protect our soil and ourselves against the next flood. Another farmers group in Mulanje district warms up for a field school day. First up on the agenda, the harvest of their maize field. The facilitator of this FFS is Constance Muhama. She is a graduate of the Kulima Master Trainers course. The farmers, they can at least learn from themselves through the farmer field school. It's, a, it's not a top-down approach, it's a demand-driven. So I can say all the topics in the farmer field school are relevant to them, because it's them who chose the topics. The harvest is disappointing. A lot of maize crops are covered with dark spots. Aflatoxin is a poison. It suppresses the immune system and is especially dangerous for children. Unfortunately, the problem is widespread. In Malawi, aflatoxin is a big problem. The grains that we harvest, we talk of uh, granuts and maize, they are highly contaminated. Like over 40% of the grains that we harvest are contaminated by aflatoxins. In this laboratory, Mr. Nkwinda tests grain samples from across Malawi. Almost half of the samples have aflatoxin levels that are considered unsafe for human consumption. Mr. Nkwinda works for IITA, the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, which is partnering with Kulima in the fight against aflatoxin. This fungus resides in the soil, in the fields. So if we are to combat these aflatoxins, it has to start from the field, where now we need to employ good agronomic uh, practices. And in addition to that, as IITA, we developed a biocontrol product which we are calling AfraSafe. AfraSafe consists of fungi carried by sorghum grains. The grains are colored blue to distinguish them from normal sorghum grains, but the main ingredient is the fungi, which is invisible to the bare eye. The fungus that is in AfraSafe will fight against the bad fungus that is in the soil in the field to the level that this bad fungus will be reduced, its population in the field will be reduced. So if there is any chance of your crop being colonized by any fungus, your crop will be colonized by the good fungus. In so doing, you have harvest the crop that is free from this bad fungus. The soil beneath our maize or ground nuts usually hosts a variety of different fungi, likely a mixture of a few harmless strains and plenty of dangerous ones. As your crops grow, and especially when they are stressed by extreme weather, the dangerous fungi get a chance to contaminate your harvest. To avoid this, Aflasafe is applied early in the season, before any of the fungi spores had a chance to establish. The Aflasafe fungi comes attached to a sorghum grain, which serves as a food source. Boosted with nutrients, it will outgrow all its competitors in the soil. When your maize matures, the only fungi present in your field is the one without any sort of negative effects for the crop or humans. Aflasef will help farmers to fight aflatoxin in coming seasons. But another problem with our focus on the cultivation of maize remains. We have become too dependent on just one single crop. Generally, casually, yeah, farmers just believe on the maize production, but said no. We are encouraging the farmers, they should crop diversify. 
at the end we need to have a household which is food secure. In a Zinalangandi, best on him of Fiji. The Indizaka fifty seven. The Indiana Kona fight. At Matawiri, Agaza Tatu. A farm size of one hectare is quite common in Malawi. About 75% of all the food we eat is grown on farms of this scale or smaller. That's why Kulima is targeting its support to farmers like Musichiri. Njala, ndi mango mva kwa wa ndukuti njala ndichiani. Chifukwa, ndi magulisa nchito kasu. Ndi meri makakati mpulmuswa ini. Musichiri is member of a farmer field school that takes part in a trial to test improved sweet potato varieties. Ah, uh, kumbali yambata ta, ta puzira pondi tu. Pa magulon se six yambata ta, ndi zobe liga gulu kwambiti. Ndi uh, pindula ke, zimene zizo tima gulisa, komansu tima adia. Malawi is a poor country. Maize is the staple food crop, and maize is susceptible to effects of climate. There's drought, maize will be affected. There's a lot of rains, maize will be affected. But sweet potato production, usually, it's consistent. It's just a crop which you plant, and as long as you take care of it, it will give you something to eat. You don't have years when the sweet potato has been hit, either by pests and disease or by rain, all by drought. That's how I like this crop. No chemicals, no fertilizer. It can do very well anywhere. As long as there's some moisture, the crop will grow. I love the crop. Dr. Felistas Kipongu works for the Kulima Partner Institution, CIP, the International Potato Center. Chipongu is the brain behind the improved sweet potato varieties tested by Musichiri's FFS. What do you want to see in a sweet potato? We want to see A, B, C, D. Those A, B, C, D, they are in that variety, high yield. In that variety, high dry matter content. That variety, uh, resistant to pests. But you need to combine all those in one variety. Welcome to the sweet potato crossing block. In case you don't know, sweet potato, they flower. This is a sweet potato flower. These are the anthers called the male parts. And you open this one. There's the female part. You are taking the pollen from the male. You are rubbing it with the female. And then you close. This one now will produce seed. I'll show you where seed development has started. Uh, this is the seed that has developed. If I take this, you see that uh, these are seeds. So this will dry into seeds like this. Each seed in here will give a different plant. And when in the field, now we start screening to look for the materials that are carrying the traits which we want. A trait that is of special interest of Dr. Chipungu is the color of the sweet potato flesh. The orange fresh sweet potato is specifically good for the vitamin A. It is important for the provision of the immune system in the body. In the rural areas where they cannot afford maybe meat, they cannot afford eggs, they cannot afford milk, 
but they can afford growing sweet potato if they grow and eat sweet potato on daily basis they have a good source of vitamin A you can cut Dr. Chipungu worked many years on the creation of an outstandingly tasty orange fleshed sweet potato that is high yielding, disease resistant, and well adapted to the Malawian climate. In 2011, she actually came out with a variety that ranks very high in all these categories. This variety, I released it in 2011. It is deep orange, high yielding, it gives you more than 25 tons per hectare, and people like it. The name Kajawe Berere, uh, it means eat and come back for some more. It was given by farmers during participatory evaluation, and when they tested it, they liked it and gave it this name. It's one of the key varieties I have developed, and it's going like wild, like uh, wildfire. Because when developing these varieties, farmers are also involved. We do on-farm research trials, where farmers do provide their input. Based on Musichiri and his FFS, take part in exactly that kind of research trial. I do the science, but if I don't take these materials to the farmer, then I haven't achieved anything. But when we join hands with these other projects like Kulima, who are now coming in to get these materials to the farmers and train them how to grow it, how to process it, how to store it, that's the best part of it. <laughs> when I see it with the farmer, when I see the farmer eating, the rural people there taking it as food, that's the happiest moment. Then me, I will rest peacefully that my job is done. The on-farm research trials benefit scientists and farmers alike. The research center gets a chance to evaluate the performance of different varieties under real-life conditions. And the farmers get to experience which varieties best meet their specific needs. The involvement in the research process also has unexpected side effects. Some members feel empowered to be messengers of FFS knowledge in their communities. Mosichiri and his friend Mandolo developed a very creative form to educate their neighbors. The local church is where they find their audience. Amen. <laughs> 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 
Infused with a lot of comedy, Mandolo and Musichiri talk about farming techniques they picked up at their FFS. This particular explains how to make a certain kind of compost manure. Tikaone <laughs> With this story about two farmers who use creativity to spread FFS knowledge in their community, we leave Mulanje district behind. We continue in the north at Nkata Bay, where it's getting harder and harder for the fishermen to make ends meet. Bang <laughs> Lake Malawi has more fishy species than any other lake in the world. But today, many of them are threatened with extinction. To find fish, James needs to go further and further out on the lake. Here, sudden weather changes are a great threat to the fishermen. Nyanya kunamba mpepo ya vuma. Vuma jali nkati ba watu jamachuse. Kena unangu gasa tundi bwerele. Ndiri nkati kati mo bwerele. Fundi na sani menya. Ndiku ndi kudubuza. Ndi kwezi la pamaisi. Nita kudubuzi kati. Ndi maonga na gansa utawa wa pamaisi. Kumano ndi nsiku lumena yu.
James was rescued, but some of the other fishermen never made it back to shore. <laughs> Despite the high risk and effort, James doesn't catch much and it gets more difficult from season to season. Since fish is an important source of protein that is needed to improve food security in Malawi, the Kulima program is committed to a more sustainable alternative to wild fishing. The decline of fish from the lake, aquaculture is now standing in the gulf. People are able to raise fish in their ponds and they are very certain they are going to get good returns from aquaculture. The nutritive value of the fish is very essential to Malawi. As you know, a healthy nation is able to advance. David Mbamba works for the fisheries department of the Ministry of Agriculture, which is partnering with Wild Fish, the institute in charge for aquaculture research within Kulima. As head of the fish farming center, he examines how the conditions for fish farming in Malawi can be improved. We grow the fish here to understand their growth performances. You know, before we can take the fish to the farmers, ourselves, we need to understand how the fish are growing. We have to look what type of feed to be given to this fish to reach to this level. And how long can it take to reach this level? Apart from research, the fish center is also an important supplier of fingerlings for commercial fish farmers in the region. These fingerlings are prepared for transport for a training lecture at the FFS Master Trainer Program in Imsuzu. As I already said one time, that intelligence is when somebody is able to think on his own or her own. Not only copycat. <laughs> yeah? So what, is the, what are other factors you can consider when you want to transfer the fish? As you're moving the fish from one, point, one side to another, mm -hmm. the fish are already adopted to a certain temperature. And now, if he, the temperatures have changed with a bigger margin, I'm going to this. Okay. So you need to consider the temperature plus the speech which you are transferring. After a theoretical introduction, the training continues in the field. For the sources of water, for aquaculture, we rely upon underground water and the water that comes from the river. So that's why you see the river is in the upper land, whereby the water can be taken into uh, the ponds by gravity, hence reducing the cost. What is the purpose for that safer? Huh? To avoid wild or foreign species entering into the pond because they'll compete for the feed which you have already calculated for our fish. It's time to stock the fingerlings in the pond before the entire oxygen in the bags is used up. You can take around five to ten minutes to allow the temperatures to stabilize. Allow the water from the bag and the water from the pond to exchange so that you allow the fish to go out of the bag on their own, not pushing them, not throwing them like maize, 
because they will die because of temperature shock. A production cycle is six months. You can change up to eight months, depending upon the growth, a weight gained per day. This one is the owner of this place, Mr. Mogani Muhoni. He's a lead farmer, so that he can teach other farmers on how to do aquaculture. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mhoni, uh, for allowing us to visit the work that you are doing here. It's been an eye-opener to us. You know, when we were discussing in the classroom, we thought maybe this is like, something that we can just hear. By looking at it now and seeing the beautiful work that is here, we are also encouraged. For Mr. Mohoni, the hard work of constructing the pond has paid off very well. A kilo of fish is 2,500, while a kilo of maize is 170 kwacha. So you can just see the difference. There are very big difference. That's why I'm saying all Malayans who've got the environment suitable for fish farming, the better they start fish farming because uh, it's food, nutritionally, to the most. It's food. Apart from, they give you enough income to do other things. But first and foremost is the nutrition that you get into your family from the fish pond. Even if you say, oh, aquaculture, you are able to make 12 million. Within one year, you're able to make a profit of 5 million. But those are stories. But if they come and see, seeing is believing, definitely they'll say, oh, I was wasting my time. Here's business, let me do it. So that's what we are trying to do. Bring the research findings into actual things. Mr. Mbamba sums up pretty well what Kulima's farmer field school approach is trying to achieve. Important agricultural knowledge from dedicated researchers is made available to those who can use it best. What we learn corresponds to our most urgent challenges and helps us to find solutions within our reach. The tricks we learn we pass on to one another and we wish you would also join the circle. What do you think? <laughs> Let's test and see if you really have what it takes. How much of the messages in this film did you capture? We are going to ask you some questions now, and after each one, you have a few seconds to make up your mind before we will reveal the answer. Here we go. What kind of problem did this farm group encounter during their AESA? Has the cassava been infected by a pest or by a disease? And what is it called? So matenda kwa moyo. According to this community, why was the impact of the flood worse than in previous years? What is the name of this tree and what kind of benefit does it provide? How do we call this problem? And how much of our grains does it affect according to the IITA scientists?
In Malawi, aflatoxin is a big problem. Over 40% of the grains that we harvest are contaminated by aflatoxins. What is the nutritional advantage of orange fleshed sweet potatoes? The orange fresh sweet potato is specifically good for the vitamin A. It is important for the provision of the immune system in the body. How long will it take these fingerlings to grow to marketable size? A production cycle is six months. You can change up to eight months, depending upon the growth, a weight gained per day. That's it for now. We hope to see you in one of our farmer field schools, where we can learn together and teach each other. Think about this. If each one could reach one, then each one could teach one. Imagine what a beautiful place Malawi would be. Oh, my.